So then if you want to jump on 13, We had the previous eclipse uh, from 2017, which we had a lot of lessons learned from that eclipse. Um, we, we did some good things on the first eclipse, but we found a couple of areas that we could really improve as far as, you know, keeping some of the uh, recreational areas being so congested. So we had plenty of time to prepare for it. In order to alleviate some of that congestion, what we did is we expanded some of our dispersed camping areas and this started way back in September. So we were able to uh, improve a lot of our dispersed camping areas and provided opportunities that weren't available on that first eclipse. And that was, that was a huge success. All of our campgrounds, completely full. Our goal was to provide safe places for people to provide camping opportunities, uh, increase the numbers of camp camping sites we had because we were very limited. My team of uh, recreation technicians um, and equipment operators, they, they put a lot of work in, into prepping sites. We increased our campsites by like four, 400 percent. You know, We have about 200 normally, we increased it to at least 800 campsites. About a year ago, we started talking about what areas could we open up, could we improve upon that would accommodate more people and try to bleed off a little bit of that visitor pressure that I think they all experienced in 2017. So we opened up some closed campground loops, opened up some what are traditionally like open lands or mowed fields for, for people to spread out and disperse camp. So we tried to improve parking situations, painting stripes, painting buildings, painting signs, installing picnic tables. Once the eclipse that week finally rolled around, we brought in all the amenities that a visitor is, is going to welcome once they show up to somewhere new. I don't think that was the case in 2017. Everyone was kind of sardined into what was already there. So hopefully this time around folks were able to spread out. Um, didn't feel like they were crowded, um, had a place to park, had a place to throw up a tent, had a place to go to the bathroom and throw their trash. Uh, collectively, I hope that made for a, a better experience. Was, that week was, was kind of questionable. It was, we had a lot of clouds. We had. We had a fair amount of rain the days leading up to Eclipse Day. In the forecast a couple days ahead, it looked like we might have a window. We had rain ahead of the eclipse and the rain behind the eclipse, so it was it's kind of up in the air which way it would go. Mother Nature cooperated for Southern Illinois. We, we had clear skies, and yeah, the eclipse was phenomenal to watch. The eclipse brought in a wide array of people from all over the country. It wasn't just from Illinois. So we, we brought in people from out west, from uh, Colorado, Montana, Texas, uh, east, you know, talking about the northeast, you know, Maine, and uh, even had some people from Europe come into the campgrounds and come to the Shawnee National Forest to view the eclipse. What I'm hoping that they remember is, you know, the, the hospitality, the wonderful landscape and everything that Southern Illinois has to offer from its national forest, from the hiking, from, you know, trail back riding, kayaking, canoeing. Oh, the hunting and fishing is pretty remarkable here too. So, you know, when they when they come back at a later venue, I'm, I'm hoping that they come back and remember some of the extra things that we have. Now more than ever, people need need nature. I think getting out and, and simplifying your life a little bit and being with nature is important for everybody. So I hope people that uh, came out kind of, you know, kind of felt that away and felt some inspiration and 
hopefully it'll bring them back. But I think it's, I think definitely it's a lasting experience for folks. Um, anytime you're in nature like this with your family, 